The topic that we're gonna talk about is the future of AI and coding. The reason I wanted to talk about this particularly was because over the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of advancements, obviously with AI. Every new AI tool, every new AI model, every new AI startup. As a result of that, we effectively have two groups of people that have emerged. There's one group of people that believe the world is over, AI is gonna take over, AI is gonna replace all our jobs, AI is gonna take over computer science, AI is gonna take coders, replace coders, computer science is no longer worth it. Then on the flip side, we have another group of people that are very optimistic, that are like, AI is a tool. AI will augment coders. AI will enable coders to do so much more than what we can right now. And computer science is actually the best major. And then we have a lot of students, early young professionals that are just learning about technology. They're like, okay, so one group says we're cooked. The other group says we're rocking. What do we do? What's the middle ground? Throughout this presentation, I hope to answer this question through going over what is the state of AI and coding now and what is to come in the future based on the progression we're headed towards. So what is going on right now? We have a lot of AI hype and fear. From the start back a couple years ago when we had Copilot and ChatGPT coming out. At that point, AI was cool. It was a tool. People used it to write their essays. People used it to do their coding assignments, but it was never something that was a fear of it replacing you. Like I worked in industry even back then and ChatGPT could maybe like write a for loop for me. It could maybe like help me with a couple of variables. Maybe instead of using Stack Overflow, I would use ChatGPT, I would use Copilot then, but it was never something crazy like no one was fearing that oh it's gonna replace our jobs or anything like that then over the following years 2023 2024 the ai tools got better the ai models got better gpt had 4.0 now we have five claude started advancing we had tools like cursor come out that could integrate into your code base it was an ide that had ai integrated into it so you could put in prompts it could create things sift through your code base there was a tool replit and within a few prompts you can create a whole website that web developers used to charge thousands of dollars for that is able to be done within $20 of a Replit subscription. And so truly AI has revolutionized the way that we code. Instead of it being a battle of Python, Java, JavaScript, now I can code in any language as long as I know English. It's truly amazing. And so that is all the hype. Then on the flip side, as a result of every part of those, we have fear, where companies are now announcing a lot of layoffs, a lot on. of AI related layoffs that we're trying to focus our efforts advancing AI, so we're gonna lay off existing workers. Anthropic CEO mentioning how AI is gonna spike unemployment to 10 to 20%, and everyone's wondering, why did you create this technology then? It's crazy, the amount of fear that is going on in the market. And Google has 25% of their code already AI generated. Mark Zuckerberg announced that they have an AI mid-level software engineer this year, and it makes you start to wonder, if AI can do everything, are we gonna be unemployed or are we good? Because these models are only gonna get better and better, and so what do we do? Why? To really unpack this question, we need to understand AI is so good at what it does. So AI is amazing. All the majors in college that we have, it is an expert. It has a PhD. It has multiple doctorates in computer science, multiple doctorates in biology, multiple doctorates in electrical engineering, multiple doctorates in literally every single major. It knows so, so much because it's trained on pretty much any data that you have access to. All the existing internet right now, all the information out there, it is trained on. And so it can synthesize the information it can pull out any information. It can even write code files because that is everything that it knows that it has seen. However, it has a huge limitation and that is human nuance. And now when it comes to the, are we cooked because of AI or are we good because of AI? I personally think because of AI's limitation in human nuance, creativity, and innovation, that is the reason why humans will be augmented or advanced because of AI, not destroyed because of AI. A while back, chocolate chip cookies weren't actually a thing. The cookies back then, they had chocolate cookies, but not chocolate chip cookies. So pretty much what they would do is they would create batter, mix chocolate into it, and then put it into an oven, and boom, you had a chocolate cookie, like the chocolate was baked into it. Then one time, someone was rushing to make cookies. They were trying to make cookies really, really quickly. So then they didn't have time to melt the chocolate to put it into the batter. What they decided to do was break off some pieces of chocolate and toss it onto the cookie, hoping it would melt in the oven and that it would all mix together and we would have a chocolate cookie. But to their surprise, the chocolate didn't melt to the degree that it ended up mixing in and the chips stayed intact. And thus we have chocolate chip cookies. Now, if we extrapolate this out to AI, the AI is a literal bot. 
It is amazing at doing everything it was designed to do. It is amazing, so in this context, it would be amazing at making those chocolate baked in cookies. It would not have known to create a chocolate chip cookie. That came out of human nuance creativity. Similarly, ice cream, waffle cones. The way that that was invented was once again human creativity. They actually used to put ice cream in bowls, and one time they ran out of bowls. And the guy next to them had a waffle maker, they had a waffle ready, and they ended up putting it into that. And then boom, they're huge industry, waffle cones. They sell out. And so once again, that human creativity, innovation, and nuance will continue to exist. That innovative nature, AI lacks significantly. AI can synthesize information, it can collect information, it has a PhD in everything, but coming up to those advanced level conclusions, those advanced level solving of problems is something that it is not optimized for. Matter of fact, the reason that humans are so especially equipped for this is because we are great at solving problems because we are also great at identifying problems. You know, if you were to ask someone, say like one of my friends, what is good about Sajjad? What are my best qualities? They might say, oh, he's a good guy. He speaks well makes good content on the internet. But then if you were to ask them, what are some problems with Sajjad? Da, 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 da. So many different things. We are great at identifying problems because everyone has unique tastes, everyone has unique preferences, everyone has unique little things going for them. And in fact, one of the things that I really recommend people nowadays, especially when everyone's asking, what coding projects should I do? What should I do? What should I do? I always tell them, find a problem and create a solution to it using AI because that will augment you, that will make you better. That is how you really get advanced and use your creativity, your unique skills. Maybe you have a unique calling. Maybe you're really good at public speaking. What unique tool can you make to make your life easier or to make your life better? Find those problems because that is where human creativity and innovation really thrives in. So as a result of all the AI coding and what we know, the role of junior software engineers as it exists today will not exist anymore. This doesn't mean you guys are gonna end up jobless or anything like that. It means the role is evolving and thus we must adapt to the new reality. So specifically, what is software engineering going to look like? Well, I've talked to a lot of executives, a lot of CEOs and leaders in the industry. And the ultimate conclusion to this is that software engineers are going to become software managers over teams of AI engineers. So instead of being the software engineer, you are going to be leading a team of AI engineers that are going to be doing the coding on your behalf. And a lot of people might think, oh shoot, so does that mean we need less software engineers because we have AI coming in? Well, personally, I like to say optimistic. And I'd like to think if say right now, each software engineer, each human software engineer can deliver say like one feature. Well, with a team of AI engineers, maybe I can deliver 10 features and I become even more productive. Then begs the question, how do you actually become more productive? So a lot of people right now, when they use AI, we always talk about using AI to make ourselves more productive. Well, it's not where I take out my phone, I talk to ChatGPT. Hey, write me an essay on this. Make it shorter. Oh, make it sound better. No, you're talking too long. Make it shorter, shorter, shorter. Make it better. This constant back and forth prompting is not effective use of AI. The best use of AI is what we call context engineering. And software engineers in the future, being the software managers, will need to become excellent context engineers. So what does that actually mean? Context engineering is when you provide so much information to the AI such that it can consume it and pretty much create your entire Tell. application or product in one go. Right now, if I cursor, for example, hey, create me an application that does X, Y, and Z. And then I give it to one of my friends. It probably would do a rather subpar operation. It might not get exactly what I wanted, how I wanted it. And so the nature of getting exactly what you want in one try from these AI tools is the premise of context engineering. So you provide as much information as possible. This is exactly how the design should be. This is exactly how the scaffolding should be. This is exactly how the file structure, the operations, the color scheme needs to be. Be. You provide in as much information as possible. For example, say you're a basketball coach. And one thing I could do is throw one of my players the ball and say, hey, I want you to score 30 points today. What's he gonna do? Maybe he'll dribble around. Maybe he'll try to get an open shot. He knows the best of his capability, which is rather limited because I'm the coach. But rather, if I was a good coach, 
what I would do is be like, okay, here, this is the play we're gonna run. I'm gonna have you go here and then we're gonna set a screen. We're gonna get you open and then boom, you're gonna make a wide open shot. Or on defense, we're gonna slide your feet like this and I'm gonna instruct it or instruct the player as best as I can and provide as much context to it as best as I can. And so similarly, you now need to be the best coach for your AI tools as possible. And that will be the difference between average software engineers and really awesome software engineers. Because guess what? Everyone has access to these AI tools. It has revolutionized the industry. Everyone has that. So what can you do that is the highest quality and quantity of prompting and context engineering? So use your skills in identifying problems through your unique human creativity and nuance and supplement that with effective context engineering to get the best response from the AI models. And the next part of the overall shift, so who knows about lead code? You guys know what lead code is? So for the few people that don't know what lead code is, lead code is basically a platform that gives you a bunch of different data structures and algorithms, mini puzzles. You're given an array. Can you find two elements in this array that add up to a certain sum? And you might use a hash set, you might use a hash map, you might use for loops. You can use a bunch of different data data structures, and it's ways that tech companies can assess a candidate on their competency, or at least that's what they think. Going forward, given the nature of software engineering is changing, the nature of these technical coding interviews has to change. And now I don't have obviously a crystal ball. I don't know exactly what they're gonna look like, but the few trends that I have seen, I'll talk about. The first change is what I call feature development interviews. So instead of you joining onto an interview and me giving you a simple puzzle, what I rather do is if I'm a company that has say a website and I want to eventually create feature X, Y, and Z, I might give a bunch of different candidates. Here, I want you to implement feature X and you'll have about a week to do it. Can you create this feature? And then the candidate that can create the best feature X, the best feature that I'm looking for, maybe I'll hire them. I've seen startups do it and it's actually so much more effective because you get to assess the software engineer on exactly what their capabilities is. You can use AI, it's not considered cheating. In fact, it's encouraged to because that's exactly what you're gonna be doing on the job. Like software engineers use AI on the job and you get to a full holistic assessment of what that engineer can do and you get to onboard them right away. So that's one change. The next change is what I call these visual based changes. So I think this might be a little bit of a temporary adjustment, but some companies like to use a lot of visuals to assess your coding capabilities. Because currently at least, AI isn't the best when it comes to video and picture processing creation. Just one example of this, I asked ChatGPT to basically create a watch face of 530. That time is not 5.30. And the reason that it messes up on this is because once again, like I've said before, AI is excellent at regurgitating at what it can see. And this watch face specifically is one of the most popular watch faces out there. This time 10, 10, it is the most popular out there. In fact, at one point, if you ask ChatGPT, create me an image of a wine glass half full or a wine glass completely full. It'll give you a picture of a wine glass that's only half full because once again, that is the most popular picture out there. And so some companies have started using these different visuals to create like a sketch diagram or maybe create like a chessboard or something like that, that you can use and use a certain coding paradigm or a coding puzzle to come up with that. That I would call a slightly augmented leak code, a way that you can prevent AI from cheating on lead code, but it's not a permanent solution clearly. And I still personally don't think it's the most effective solution, but I just wanted to offer that as ways of how software engineering interviews are changing. Overall, at the end of the day, the best thing that you can do for software engineering is act as a software engineer even right now. Even before you're hired, act as a software engineer. Identify problems, whether it's like at a local business, whether it's at an extracurricular club here on campus. Identify what issues are going on because everyone has issues. Use your human creativity to solve that and human innovativeness to create a solution for that. Maybe even use AI to iterate on some ideas. And then context engineer your AI and create an amazing solution. And then that will be an amazing step for you to show off to the world. And then eventually they'll want you at their company rather than the other way around. So I hope this helps and thank you.